you're serious about FPV, you're about to drop some serious cash, I mean like four, five, six, seven hundred dollars on a pair of analog video glasses, well, stay tuned because there's some things you definitely need to know before you make that purchase. G'day, Stu from UAV Futures here, and today, well, we've got a big video that I'm sure some people are gonna get very triggered by. The comments are gonna absolutely light up, but we're gonna be answering this question should you be getting the Fat Shark HDO2s? Is the $500 a waste of money in 2020? And I also want to say a bit of a, not a spoiler, but a warning. If you've got a pair of goggles out there and you enjoy them, no matter what brand, if you're enjoying Omway, Sky Zones, DJI, Fat Shark, that's great. I don't want to stop anybody enjoying the product they've spent their money on. Thumbs up this video. It, I don't care what goggles you fly, but this video is all about giving you the right information so you can make the right choice, you can get the right goggle for you and find out how much you want to spend, all that sort of stuff. And this is kind of like things I wish that I would know. If I was going to buy a pair of top end goggles, what do I want to know about them? So this video, if you haven't made a purchase, is for you. If you already have and you're enjoying your goggles, thumbs up. I couldn't be happier for you. So let's do it. Let's kick it off. This video, it's all going to be about the HDOs from Fat, the HDO2s from Fat Sharks. It's a new flagship model. We're going to put them on the bench, break it down, look at the techs and the specs, talk about the pros and the cons. We're going to go out of the field to show you what the DVR is like. And most importantly, we'll give them to some other pilots, get their impressions as well, so you can kind of get a conglomerate of it and find out you know with these varied opinions is it going to be a good purchase and then we're going to come back to the studio and this is the big one where we're going to wrap it up and we're going to be talking about should you be getting this goggle is the hdo 2 worth it compared to some of the other options out there and also price wise how does it stack up when we're looking at the o3o's maybe you want to think about getting some dji's with a little adapter in the side now that that's out and then in 2020 is this one the right one to get or uh, are you kind of wasting your money with some of the other options out there so as an overview what this is like i said flagship model putting it on the scale I think it's about 200 grams. Let me just have a look here. But that is, let me tear these off. Come on, silly scales. All right, yeah, it's coming in at about 207 grams. And just as a comparison to some SkyZone O3Os, they're coming in at 250 grams. But remember, these, they do not come with a module in here. So you're still going to need to purchase a module. They've got their little module bay on the side right there. And chances are, you are going to be purchasing a rapid fire to get with these goggles. Most people out there for your everyday flying aren't going to really notice too much of a benefit. I, for myself, personally flying with the owl unit or the rapid fire, whatever unit I seem to be getting my reception with, it all seems to be much for much unless you go out and you're flying a heavy bando with a lot of steel and interference or you're at a race with a lot of other pilots. Most of the time, I don't think rapid fire is worth it for 95% of the pilots out there, but someone like Ranger who's going to races as multiple quads, yeah, thumbs up, that might be worth it for him. So some other bits, let's go around, talk about some of the specs of the goggles. We're gonna talk about the screens last because they're probably something that is absolutely gorgeous on this goggle and I wanna leave a lasting impression with you. I cannot stress enough, the screens in here are absolutely delicious. Flipping it over, let's have a look what we got. Finally, we have a power button. Fat Shark, four years, has been asked to put this in and they've finally done it, they've listened. They've probably followed some other things like the Sky Zones have been putting them in for a while. They've got their little power button on the side. I don't really like that it's underneath because I feel like if it's on your face, you might be pulling it off and accidentally press it. You know, you might be going to adjust it. I would prefer it if it was on the side. I think that's a much smarter choice because it's harder to accidentally push that. Uh, speaking of which, we've also got our little barrel plug right here. You've got your AV in port. If you wanna put some little, I'll put a picture on the screen as well, a little AV in port. Power button, like I mentioned, you've got your IPD adjustments and also your focus adjustments, which are a big one because you can also not only have a wide IPD or narrow IPD, which is great to get them in focus, but you can also bring them in and out like some by strolling this little wheel right here. You can see, hopefully this is in shot in the roof cam, that uh, is going in and out so you can adjust that. And I found I was able to get like pretty much 100% focus. I've got to give it to the focus I had when I was flying around with these. It combined with the beautiful screens, it was very easy to get a nice picture and it had zero blurring around the edges, which is important because a lot of times on these big field of view goggles, you know, I know that was a problem with some of the other, like the old school fat sharks, you might get a little bit of blurring. That didn't happen with this one. So that's fantastic. Of course, you've got your little uh, module on off right here. You've got your headphone jack, HDMI cord, all pretty standard stuff. Uh, on the top, you've just got your standard controls for your head tracker, which isn't included. Uh, you can 
change your channels, adjust your brightness, all that sort of stuff. That stuff is fairly standard in your goggles. It's not terribly excited. Module bay, like I mentioned, that's important because people are going to be wanting to buy this goggle for a module. If you're not concerned with a module bay, you are much better off. I'm just telling you now, getting something like the cheaper Sky Zones, which are 100 bucks cheaper and come with an inbuilt module. And then on this side, this is where you put your little head tracker as well. And you get this flimsy fat shark strap on the back, which I kind of think is a bit of a joke. And you also get two little foam pieces to put in the side so that way you can adjust the sort of the light leakage which is flying around here. I had mine on the wide piece and I've got to say as well I wasn't getting any light leakage and you get two sets of foam but it doesn't really make a difference for me because a big one I want to say is they're just super uncomfortable. Some of the most uncomfortable goggles on my face anyway. And you see this when I'm out in the field, I have some big marks and it doesn't matter how loose I have this back strap right here, they just seem to really cut into my face. Maybe I've just got, I probably do have an odd shaped head. So for me, they were cutting into my face, something shocking. They weren't very comfortable whatsoever and uh, I feel you're much better suited to even Omways, Sky Zones, DJIs, and they're a lot heavier, even are more comfy on my face. And I think a big part of that problem is it's this foam that's down the bottom here. You can see just how thin that is. And when that's right here, you've got nothing but hard plastic resting on your face. So that part, I wasn't really a bit of a fan of. Uh, you also get this cool battery case, but you're gonna need to buy some batteries, some 18650s. So you, and of course, you don't get any antennas for your $500. So look, you get some good screens for 500 bucks, but it's gonna be fairly costly. Now, talking about the screens, this part is important. So the resolution in here, I think it's 1280 by 960, yeah. It is 1280 by 960 OLED displays. You can switch between four by three and 16 by nine. It is just, it just looks fantastic. Looking in this, you have such a beautiful picture. And I got to take my hat off to Fat Shark when they're always putting out their OLED displays. It looks gorgeous. Does it look better than the Sky Zone OLEDs? I would say they're probably about. I would say yes, it does. If I would give the Sky Zones a 9.5, I would give the Fat Sharks a 10. I think their screen is absolutely one of the best screens out there. I haven't tried Orca. Orca is probably not going to send me a pair of goggles because uh, I don't know after them watching this one what they're going to think, especially when I talk about value for money. But uh, yeah, in my opinion, I'm going to say the screen in this is absolutely delicious. Now, what we should do before we go out, let's talk about the pros and the cons, and then we're going to compare them at the end to some of the other goggles before we see what the other parts think as well. Pros, things I like. Screen is absolutely gorgeous. I couldn't fault it enough. It just it, It's easy to focus too. So you've got that multifocal or different ways to focus your lenses in there with in and out. Also from side to side, I really, really like that. I like that it takes 18 650s. Finally, we've got a power button. We've also got an inbuilt fan to turn it on and off. That stuff is all absolutely a top notch. And then let's move on. Talk about some of the things that I don't like. Number one. They are extremely uncomfortable, at least on my face anyway. I really found like they were cutting in, digging in. I wouldn't want to wear these for more than about 20 minutes before. Uh, you're definitely going to need to do some aftermarket mods to not only this foam, but also this strap. You're paying 500 bucks and they're still giving us the same Fat Shark head strap from like 2014. Come on, Fat Shark, what are you guys doing? Put like, if you're out there and you're going to be getting this, or maybe you've already got a pair, I would say check out like the Mr. Steel Ethics strap or something because he's made that strap for himself. That looks really cool. It's a really big strap that goes around the back of your head. It's very, very similar to the one that comes standard with the Sky Zone. It's a big wider strap like this, much more comfortable and uh, just holds the goggles more securely on your face. So that strap's got to go. Also the foam, extremely thin. I didn't like that. And then something that just is very hard for me to get past is these little foam pieces are right here. They're kind of touching my eyelashes. So it doesn't matter where I adjust them or I guess with the foams that come with it, no matter which one I put it in there, they're touching my eyelashes. So when I'm flying around, it almost felt like there was a little bug or something on the end. Every time I blinked, I could feel it on there and it was extremely off-putting. So in terms of how they fit on my face, even though the screen's beautiful, in terms of how they fit, it just doesn't do a good job both with comfort and also the irritation or the just annoyance that happens when I'm flying around. So that part, I'm not really a fan of whatsoever. And then the last one, we gotta talk about the price, especially considering what else is on the market. You are spending $500 for essentially two very, very nice screens. They don't come with a receiver. Uh, they don't come with antennas. They don't come with batteries. They only come with those dodgy head straps and dodgy foam and it's just, it's a ton of cash. And frankly, is it a worthwhile investment or is it a bit of a waste of money? Well, I don't know, when we compare it to some of the other things, it doesn't look that attractive to me. I mean, we've got Sky Zones, which yeah, you can't put a rapid fire in here, even though they do have this little module bay thing, which I think is another 10 bucks, but Sky Zones, they're only 400 bucks. You're getting OLED screens, they come with built-in receivers, and they're just 
kind of a kicker and a big gachu strap, a power button on the side. The Sky Zones just seem to be an absolute awesome choice, especially if you want OLED or if you want to spend a little bit more. I mean, by the time you focus this in, you might be thinking, should you just get a pair of like these DJI goggles and that way you've got your digital, your self future digital proof, but also uh, if you put a little $10 module like this and I'll link a video on the side, uh, this bit, you can actually plug in an analog video receiver into the side of your DJI module now. So this one, I think it's about the 630 buck mark. Maybe that might be a better choice to future proof yourself if you're looking at upgrading totally about all those. But as it stands, and, and you've also got the Orcas, which is 630 bucks, which offer apparently some better features. I haven't tried the Orcas out, but I find the Fat Sharks are definitely in a very, very tough place when it comes to value for money. But look, that's it on the bench. What we're going to do now, we're going to go out, fly around, we'll see what I think, show you some DVR, show you what some of the other boys think about them as well. We've got some, we've got Granger who typically loves Fat Sharks, we've got Jono who prefers Sky Zones, Tony who will fly anything. We've got my impressions, I've been switching goggles for a long time now. So uh, yeah, we'll get their impressions and then we'll come back to the studio, wrap it up and let you guys know, is this the right goggle to get in 2020? So let's do it, go out to the field and have some fun in three, two, one. Radio out here in the field. Let's do it. The one we've all been waiting for. We're with the boys. We're going to find out what they think about the HDO2s. And oh my, we're going to have a lot of fun. And first things first, I want to say on my face. And what do I have? Do I have a mark up here? Boy, you got a mad mark. Do I? Be yeah. yeah, because these <laughs> things don't crap. feel comfortable. <laughs> like there's no. Look at it. It looks like you've got four. Well, yeah, they don't don't feel too comfortable. Anyway, what we're going to do, we're going to fly around. We'll give you my impression, show you some DVR records, and see what the other boys think as well. Alrighty, so on my face, first things first, I want to say, I loosened the strap up a little bit. I'd already loosened it, loosening it. It's very loose on my face, but that was the only way I could get it to stop cutting into my uh, forehead. Maybe I have a very strange shaped head a big buff head we'll have to see the screen on this impression is very very clear it was easy to put the module in that fitted well uh the battery where i've got just here i prefer the pocket battery but you know that's that's just my personal preference let's go for a spin i'm not getting any light leakage i've got a round circle shape over the front of like the 16 by 9 image which is Look, I, I think uh, it'd be like some, there's no light leakage. It'd be like old school light leakage where you just get used to it. Um, that circle shape I think is perfectly fine. It does feel very close to my face though and it's tickling my eyes a little bit. I know in Bot Grinders it was, his eyelashes were getting stuck on here. So I don't know if you've got longer eyelashes, I feel like mine are touching the lens when I'm blinking, I can feel it. So I'm, I'm not a fan of that. And it, it I've got to say it now, it is uncomfortable on my face, very, and usually fat sharks have a nice big cushy part on here, but these just seem to be digging in quite a lot. All right, we've got Granger's drone. We're away. I think we're recording. Oh, how do I know if I'm recording? Isn't there meant to be a red light flashing in the middle? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to land. I know how to do it if you don't. Okay, you can try pushing it because I can't see the red light flashing at the moment. I thought I turned you that on. You won't be able to see it. Oh, you can't? Hang on. You okay. won't be able to see it unless you're actually looking at it. Let me pull these out a little bit. Oh, it is, it is. Flashing. Okay, yeah, no, it is flashing. All right, so that's something different. You can't tell if these are recording or not, which uh, you can do that on your other goggles. And I don't know, with like the Onways, it would flash up. And even the other old school Fat Sharks, you could see the little bit of red in the middle, but definitely, I'm not gonna take off. You want to take off now? <laughs> Right, I'm just going to interject here because I didn't know this until I'd, after I'd filmed this video, just working through it in post-production, going through the editing, but everything I thought would be fine and normal, we've flown around, we've seen what the footage looks like, all that sort of stuff when we're out in the field to our feed, but uh, here, this is how the DVR came back, and I thought maybe this is just Granger's quad, but it's the same when Tony flies it around as well, so I don't know what is happening, and look, maybe I am doing something wrong, and maybe there's there's two prop, there's three things that could happen here. Maybe I'm using the goggles wrong, I just have no idea what's going on, which is why we getting this dvr which i it, to me frankly looks broken number two maybe it actually is broken and we've got a faulty unit out of the box and the dvr on the hdo2s could be a little bit questionable or number three maybe it doesn't work with the module uh that we've got here and if that's the case i think that might be the worst one of all because if it only so supports select modules 
Uh, well, that part is a little bit crappy for people out there who might have a range of different modules and different uses and that sort of stuff, because you don't want to be locked in. The whole reason you're getting this is for the module base. So if you can only use one specific module, that might kind of sucks. But I don't know what the reason about this is. Maybe Fat Shark will send me an email or something, or if you've got some ideas in the comments down below. It looks like, at least in my testing, the DVR recording that we did anyway in a couple of different quads, the DVR, all of it came out like this. So maybe something's wrong. I don't know what's going on. I thought it'd be fine. And it wasn't until we, act I've never had a pair of goggles where you get home and the, the DVR, especially on Fat Sharks or any of these high-end goggles where it, it didn't work. So I'm just as much a shock as you are the uh, DVR. Just seem, seems kind of broken anyway. But let's go back now to uh, when we're back out in the field and get on with the review. All right. Okay, let's do it. Let's actually go for a spin now. Okay. Very, very clear picture. Nice colours. It it does look nice. This is about as good as analog is going to get. The tricky part is they're really going up for some stiff competition against people like DJI with their digital stuff. Okay. The picture is huge as well. Very immersive. I think if you've got a complete analog setup and you want to get some of the best goggles out there, there, there is a reason Fat Shark are so popular and they've been in this for so long because they do make fantastic goggles. Now, the problem we've got, they in the back in the day, they used to be the only choice we had. Now there is a lot of competition. We've got Sky Zones, we've got Omways. These are better than Omways, absolutely. Are they better than Sky Zones value-wise? I'm not too sure the picture i would say is comparable whether you're going to go this one or whether you're going to go the oled sky zones both of those have an amazing screen this one does have a module bay which a lot of people are going to be interested in but also on the flip side when it looks at the sky zone goggles because they've got a module built in and they're cheaper uh, you're going to be saving yourself a lot more dollars if you want to go down that route and just get the oled screens but uh not have to worry about the modules of the uh go to the OLED screens, but you don't have to go out and then buy yourself something like a rapid fire on top of that. I should also mention Fat Shark has awesome customer service, but as far as these go, on my face, are they the most comfortable goggle? No. Is the screen beautiful? Yes. It, I love the big wide screen. Finally, Fat Shark's gone 16 by 9 for me. That's what it's all about. It's going to make analog look about as good as it's going to go. It's just going to be a hard sell for a lot of people. Value for money wise, are they worth it? And that's the part where I'm not 100% sure. It is an awful lot of money, especially if you throw rapid fire in here. And I wouldn't recommend this for beginner pilots. I wouldn't recommend this for intermediate pilots. I would say get these if you are hardcore into racing, you want the best analog video you can get, and you also want to be able to put a module in. Then these make sense. But for the everyday pilot, uh, I don't know. And these also aren't the most comfortable, which I find surprising when you're going to be dropping this much cash on a pair of goggles. But I don't know. It is... I should say, it is very nice flying around as far as analog goes. I'm I'm kind of on the fence. Price-wise, I don't know. Feature-wise, it's it's kind of about as good as you're going to get, but it's very, very expensive. Anyway, what we should do, let's uh, bring it in, hand it to the other boys. Oh, I also like, too, the fan. They finally put a power switch in here, which people have been asking for for about a decade. So good job there, listening, Fat Shark. But, yeah, overall, yeah, for me, just... An awesome pair of goggles that's also awesomely expensive. But let's bring it in. We'll see what some of the other boys think. And it's going to be interesting too because Granger is a huge Fat Shark fanboy. Jono likes Sky Zone. I know uh, we've got Long Range Tony who he flies Fat Sharks, but he also likes Sky Zones and Onway. So it's going to be good to get all their varied opinions. So let's do it. Bring it in and see what they think. All right. Before we finish up, i got one really important question. Yeah, yeah, go, go, man. Do you always fly for ears scrunched up like that? Uh, is it? Yeah. Is it this one? Yeah. It does feel a bit... Oh, maybe that's the weird battery part. I'm not used to having my battery there. You know, it's usually in my pocket, so... Uh, and, uh, distracting me the whole time. <laughs> I'm like, God, that can't be comfortable. So, you know what? I was more concerned with the comfort on my... Like, do I have some marks on my yeah, face? Yeah, you got raccoon and, stuff And going this on. is about as loose as it gets before it's going to fall off my face, so... Really? Look up. I don't know. You guys try it. Maybe you know I've just really got a weird shaped face. You know how you're saying your eyelashes are rubbed against? Yeah. It? That's what I was getting with the recons, I think it was. Not the recons, sorry. What was the... Um, the green ones? The attitudes. Or yeah, they're yeah. the V5s. Yeah, I the think. attitudes. That's what I was getting with the attitudes. All right, and well, really you're going to love these, mate. <laughs> oh, that wind. How's the picture? Windy. The picture was very nice. If the flash pops, it yeah. means it's going to... I don't know. Anyway, they should <laughs> yeah, be... Like is it still recording? Yeah. Except okay. Granger. HDO2s, finally. Very excited. Yep. I've been what do you a currently fly? Uh, HDV3s HD or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. 
But uh, yeah, look, I flew the HDOs when I was over in China and I loved them. And I didn't know whether to get a pair of them or these. So this should be, I'm very excited. I'm okay. very excited. All right, put them on your face. All right. Are they flat already? Maybe. Sucking down the juice. Okay. First um, impressions. Look, I can feel them touching my eyelashes. In terms of that picture, damn, that is something else. That is nice. Uh, and I fly four by three. These are sixteen by nine. I think yeah. they're native sixteen by nine. I don't know hundred percent, but um. All right. Get so yeah. Out of here. And we're just using a standard module too. I don't. I think it's yeah, just no. some Achilles one I grabbed, but yeah. Yeah. So it could be. It, it'll probably improve with rapid fire as well. I, I would say so. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I could. I am usually like a four by three fanboy, but this is just. Oh, just the pictures, the just the contrast in the trees is, it's a lot different to what I'm used to. Uh, and they look different to the HDOs as well, in my opinion. They have more of a, that's weird, actually. Uh, Around the trees, it seems to have like a really strong white outline. It's uh, weird. And I feel like some people are either going to love that or hate that. Me, personally, I like that because it really... It really makes that tree stand out so you can see it. Um, in terms of the colours, it's a pretty overcast, cloudy day. And uh, we have a Racer Run Cam 3 on this uh, drone. And it's, wow, the colours are just really good for how cloudy today is on uh, analog. So, is this the best screen you've ever yes, seen? Yes, easily the best screen for me personally. I Because I, this it's always going to come down to personal preference. Yep. Um, and for me, this, I love it. This is great. Okay, do I, you prefer this over the HDOs? Uh, oh man, that's really tough. Look, in terms of comfort, I'd say no, but in the picture, in terms of picture right now, and it, it, it's, it could be different with rapid fire as well. I'm gonna say uh, yes, just, okay. but if I had either one, I wouldn't be disappointed. Yeah. Uh, whether it's how much, are these way more expensive than these? No, no, I think they're uh, 800 Australian, which I think Whoa. is about 500 US. I'd ha I'll put it on the screen anyway. Um, look, if they're a lot more expensive than the original HDOs, I wouldn't bother. But I if they're so. if okay. they're just a little bit more, uh, I definitely think that you'd be better off with these because you can change to four by three as well, and I don't think you can do that with the HDOs, to my knowledge. Um, but yeah, no, nah, best picture I've ever seen. Like just the vibrant okay. colours. And what do you uh, think about the price? Value for money? Uh, it's standard fat shark Apple sort of stuff. Like you know, it's it's man too expensive for a lot of people you know like eight hundred dollars Australian that's a huge chunk of money like and whether that's worth it you'd have to be pretty heavily invested into analog to do that considering all the DJI stuff that's coming out now yep. um, my battery's dead so I don't know I would they're just too expensive honestly for what they are I would say DVR. yeah yeah for what they are they're they're just too expensive but you know are you going to get a set? Sort. Oh, yeah, I probably will. They're, Why? Why? They're a lot better than the older, uh, hey, uh, the older fat shark goggles like the HD twos, threes, and all that. But the picture quality is just so much better. Um, in ter like in terms of comparing them to the HDOs and these ones, uh, they're roughly the same, but you have just a few more features with this. So I'd probably go with the HDO twos can if they're not that much more expensive, which apparently they're not. So. Cool. I'm, I'm happy with them. Obviously the price, it's not a good bang for the buck. It's more premium, like you're really invested and you know what you're sort of buying. Um, but yeah, I'd get them. They're really good for, you know, right. Th these are the best goals you can get for analog, so. Okay, nice. Yeah, I All like right. them. Nice, thanks Granger. No worries. Hey, yo, Giano, we've got Tony doing some repairs down there. So Fat Shark HDO 2s, the most expensive analog goggles on the planet. Put a rapid fire in there. What, you're probably gonna be hitting a grand? Oh, really? maybe? maybe. Is that Australian? Oh, that'd be about, Australian. That's Grand a, Australian. Yeah. yeah, that's still yeah, yeah. money, man. <laughs> maybe like <laughs> seven hundred bucks US. Anyway, six fifty. I don't know. Yeah, let's yeah, do yeah. it. Uh, HCO twos. <laughs> yeah. First so impressions. first impression. First impression. Power switch. It's got adjustable uh, IPDs, and also you can minute you know, into pupillary display, or whatever, you can also move it in and out. Oh, so if it's the not in and in out focus, thing, that's really good. Yep, yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. I really like it when they add those because sometimes I, I really struggle with like just getting it right on my head and you sometimes focus, you have to put them up a yeah. little bit or down a little bit to get that focus right. Just taking that out of the equation. That's, that's a nice thing. I feel like it'll be good if more had that. 
yeah um man they feel nice they look premium um a little bit thin on the padding there but yeah we'll see how that goes i, I like that they added the power and fan switch that's yep. um a really nice thing yeah <laughs> yeah that's um yeah i'd like to give them a shot let's fly something with all right let's uh grange is going to plug in for us uh <laughs> how's your face in these hey how is it um uh yeah actually it, it, like in terms of like fit around on my actual face it feels nice but straight up my eyelashes are touching the freaking lenses man <laughs> what's the voltage uh, uh hold on i can't see it yet um i think we're on the wrong channel maybe oh uh yeah yeah we are we are hang on move your hand i'll get us there yeah yeah i think it was stuffing it oh. there you go how's yeah. that I uh, just got to get focus dialed in. Hold on. Oh. So remember you got IPDs and yeah, the other yeah, one. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got to, um, hold on. Uh, and while we're waiting to do that, you, I'll go get your other, other goggles, right? These are Jono's old goggles. These are some old school OG Sky Zones from like three years ago, mate. How have these been holding up? I love them. They're great. Okay, so it's going to be interesting. You're going from like a really old school pair yeah. to the uh, most high-end analog goggles on the market. Yeah. It took me a while to get those into focus, but yeah. Oh, check the voltage. Grange is not sure what he's doing. Uh, we've got 24.9. Oh, I didn't yeah, do success. Good, is that good, okay? Is that all right? Yeah, man. And it's which one? Anyway, just left it. or right for uh, arms? That is right. arm. Oh, and uh. using a new radio, but we're not allowed to talk about that just yet. So, yeah, yeah, anyway. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, let's um rock and roll. Oh, actually, yeah, first up, like, yeah, before I even take off, that screen is freaking huge. You know what? You know what I like about this. Before I take off and start having to concentrate on flying and not being yes. able to concentrate on talking about what I need to actually talk about, yes. uh, is that the screen is huge, but with the focus, I don't have blurring around the edges. Yeah, actually. That's so yeah. this is what it reminds me of. It, 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 like, we, like the thing. Like, I really liked about box goggles. And everyone hates box goggles, but I liked that. Like, you had a big picture and you could look down to the bottom, or you could look up to the top corner of a screen, and and it, you wouldn't like have blurring or losing focus and it wouldn't like stuff up with the IPDs when you're looking around. But here I'm looking at the top corner, it's staying in focus. I'm looking at the top corner, looking down and it's all nice. Like it's staying in focus like a box goggle. It's really um, awesome. All right, let's take off. Hey, there we go. All right. Yeah, the clarity is nice. The colours are good. The wind the is windy. Screen, screen. Yeah, the wind is bloody windy today, man. I really wanted to fly my um, uh, fly that um, the Talon, but man, anyway. it's All right, back yeah. to the goggles. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, colours are good. The screen is huge. The clarity is nice, particularly because I can focus them. I find with a lot of the goggles, I can like even with the IPD adjustment and stuff, I just can't quite get them right. I can't, but this is like, this is like spot on, it is. Yeah, which is really good. Um, oh man. Like, yeah, I actually quite like this, except for, like I was saying before, my eyelashes are rubbing on the, on the screen. If it wasn't for that, these would be like really freaking good. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, how crisp and clear they are. I'd almost put up with, um, put up with the eyelash thing. Maybe I could get used to that, maybe. <laughs> Um, what else? Oh, that's a comfort. Um, uh, not bothering me at the moment, but I feel like if I was flying for a long time, I'd probably start getting a little bit bothered by it. I do. I can feel like it's got a bit of pressure in some places. I reckon, um, uh, I feel like I could do with just that fatter, some thicker fatter, foam. Th thicker foam on it, I reckon. That might even fix up the eyelash problem as well if it was just spaced out a little bit more. Sure. Like, yeah, but... Um, yeah, man, these are really nice. Like, normally when we're doing goggles, I have a hard time focusing on, on like, what's actually going on for goggles. But, um, yeah, these are, these are nice, man. I dig it. Um, what do you think about the price? Yeah, I was going to get to that. That's like, uh, you know my thing is all about bang for buck, budget racing and stuff like that. The, the price on these is just, it, like, simply unaffordable, man, for me. Like, there's no doubt about it. Like, I, I cannot afford to have these. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I could afford, like, you know, if my other goggles blew up, I could afford to switch to the other sky zones and stuff like that. But once you tack in the module and stuff like that for it, this just turns into, like, a really, really, really um 
expensive thing that does like what, what were we estimating like a thousand Australian yeah, or something? Yeah about a thousand Australian dollars which is probably about 700 US bucks. Man yeah on my paycheck that's a fair bit of money man that's a fair bit of money. Um, so who would you recommend this for then? Okay this one here Beginners? I'm gonna... Beginners? Intermediates? Oh uh, yeah I, 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 as a beginner I wouldn't drop a grand on these because a beginner you know beginners are never quite sure if they're gonna keep flying or not and a grand is a lot to blow if you're not 100% sure if you're like in for the long term yeah yeah I would definitely sit with a more middle range goggle if you're yeah, for an intermediate you're definitely better off with something mid-range like the sky zones or something and you don't have to fuss with modules and things you can just get in start doing it see if you like it okay. and it's not a huge loss if you end up so, having to so who are these it. ones made for I think these are for these are for like your pinnacle pilots, your pros that are on like the on the uh, cutting edge sort of thing. Those people that are looking for like that that top notch. Like yes, it's a very incremental change for the price. It is, but it's 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 definitely more performance. And I think that's what you know people that are looking for that cutting edge and performance are going to want. So yeah, if you've got a big paycheck or you're like right at the pinnacle of your field. Uh, in terms of like racing or freestyle, then I'm sure you'd have no issues dropping the money on these. That yeah, that battery is really getting low. I just realized that it's 6S and not 4S. So I'm like, yeah, yeah we still got ages to go. Yeah, bring that no, in, no, 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 no. I'm going <laughs> to drop it right here. Too easy. All right, so your wrecked Ranger's batteries. Final thoughts on the HDO 2s. Hey, um, man. And I'll stop <sighs> your uh, recording on Yeah, yeah, go for I it. I think, which yeah. is this button. Yep. Oh, I actually quite like them, to be honest. I cool. do. <laughs> yeah. Other than the price, like those, those screens and being able okay. to look around on the screens. There we go. That's something that's yeah. performance. Yeah. Performance, out of 10. performance, I like it. Out of 10, that's got to be like uh, at least eight or a nine for me. Okay. That does. Did you prefer the screens to the Sky Zone OLEDs? Um, I'm going to say yeah because I can actually look around on these. I feel like something that they've done for focusing and the positioning is just better on those. Sure. And yeah. Value for money wise? Value for money wise, that's a that's a very hard out no. Of 10? Out of ten, that's gonna be like for me I'm focused on budget, so it's gonna be like a two out of ten. Okay. <laughs> awesome performance but expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, gotta, gotta have that paycheck. How, that's kinda how I felt as well. Yeah. Nice. Alright, thanks, Johnny. No worries. But they, they can't deny the performance is nice. It's yeah, no, no, that's it. Like uh, that's what I'm saying. Like it feels like box goggles because I can look at the the stats around the edge of a screen and I don't get a blur in one eye because normally when I look down one eye will be good and the other one will blur yeah, out. Yeah, it'll be weird. Yeah, yeah I know. What yeah, you mean. you've got to find a mix and match. But that yeah, one yeah. Both in. Tony, HDO twos on your face. Okay. Um, I fly with a uh, Dominator V3. Yeah. Um, so I'm quite used to those. Tried a few different goggles, including the new DJI. Oh, Granger, so, that's a terrible view for this camera, yeah, mate. Jesus. Awful. No, don't what worry. Do you like it? <laughs> Dude, that's a beautiful view. It's a bit <laughs> cheeky. Beautiful man, Stu. Yeah, don't you want that? Um, so, so putting these on my face, I, I've just heard some of the comments from the other lads. Yeah. Um, the screens on them, they are touching my eyelashes. Um, but what I did like, they've got the IPD adjustments, but they've also got a. Uh, a distance so you can you can move the lenses in and out to get the focus in um, for me I'm actually wearing contact lenses at the moment and um, it means that to get them in focus I actually had to move them away a bit which made them a little more comfortable on my eyelashes mm -hmm. so I suppose depending on where your your focus is you might actually find that they're quite far away, away from yeah, your eyes yeah. but if you're bringing them close up yeah I had to focus mine close and then maybe yeah. that's what brought the, yeah. the foam the other close. thing is there also seems to be this big piece of foam stuck on yep and I know that's to stop a bit of light leakage but I reckon if you rip that off you'd, you'd even if you cut it down a little bit or yeah. something yeah yeah but if that's you took that bit, off I think I, my eyes were touching and that's what I think because it stick it's quite protrusive yeah. uh, it seems to stick out a fair bit so uh, that aside um, they're actually very comfortable on my face um, although I can feel it resting on the nose, but really nice big screen. It looks like I'm in the, uh, in the sweet spot of the cinema. Um, it's bigger than the V3s, it's 16 by nine. Um, yeah, right. it looks, looks, go for a rip? looks good. So I'll turn something on. Now, the roll. so just before we start, yeah, yeah. I, I, I use these a bit, the, the color and the, so that's color and brightness. Yep. What it what this one does that my old ones don't, it actually brings up the value for oh, brightness. So you can see where it's so at I, on the thing. I can see contrast, you know, what the number is, so I can get that on 10. Brightness, I can bring that up to 10. So you can actually see the reading as a discrete value, which is something the other ones didn't do. So I kind of like that. That's good. All right. Um, 
Is that ready to go? Yep. Yep. Don't worry about the noise. Great, what a clear screen. Um, these OLEDs are awesome. Um, I've been flying around all morning with the V3s and there's an absolute massive increase in the clarity of these OLED screens over the, um, I don't know, the, the other screens that I've got in the V3s. These are so much clearer. Um, I'd almost say that this is a halfway point between the DJI Digital and what I've been flying for the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. Um, in much, terms of the clarity, is that what you mean? What's well, making it, you say that? in terms of both the clarity and the uh, the, the the presentation of the colours, there's there's gr much better um, spread of colours in these compared to my other goggles. I feel like there's a lot more differentiation in in the reds and the greens in this. It's it's far more vibrant. I think is what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah, brilliant and a really nice large screen. Um, I always thought that my goggles had a good screen and the DJI probably spoils me because I think they've got like a 50, 56 degree field of view. This is not that far off of the DJI. It's very, very large screen. Not quite as big, but it is certainly much, much bigger than what I'm used to flying. And um, for me, I actually really like that. And I think Jono said before, he found his eyes fleeting around looking in the corners. I'm probably not that bad in, in my eyes are darting around but I can see most of the screening quite clearly. Any blurring? No not at all like I've, I've spent a bit of time before I took off in just getting them focused in and um, for me I'm really enjoying what I'm seeing no no blurriness really good colors um, plenty of clarity on the and definition in the screen um, can I see ghost branches definitely better than my other goggles probably though as I say not quite as good as a DJI digital system, but this is a long way towards it. However, I think for the money, um, at this price point, you are kind of at the, at the tilting point of do you actually spend the money and go digital and upgrade your fleet with different cameras and transmitters and really have that quality of, um, you know, high definition video. But if you've already got a fleet of quads that are set up and you just want to have that next step up in clarity, this is a good, um, this is a good option, I reckon. Yeah, it's brilliant. Even just diving back down over that tree, being able to see what I can see, it's just, um, it's just brilliant. Are these the best goggles analog you've ever used? Hands down. Okay. Hands down. I've tried quite a few goggles uh, for Stuart over the years and these for me analog goggles i don't think i've ever seen anything better than this this is these are excellent yeah these are uh, these are lovely goggles i'd love to own a pair of these stuart you know when next christmas comes around maybe. <laughs> Get out. you know it's my birthday next week maybe <laughs> you know something like that all right so that's what i'll send this part to your wife right and she can watch this video and i'll send it no no no, no no she's all sorted <laughs> This is one from a friend. <laughs> right. Well, then lucky that doesn't include me. Yeah, yeah, you just know. Too easy. All right, thanks, mate. All right, mate. No dramas. Radio, so there it is. There's my review of the Fat Shark HD O2s, and overall, would this be the choice that I would get if I didn't have a pair of goggles? I wanted to get a high end kit. I'm going to say, no. Not really, because I feel like value for money wise, even though these goggles have some of the best screens I have ever seen, there's just, you get too little for the price that they're asking for. If you just want to jump into FPV, you still want to get OLEDs, think about picking up the SkyZone O3Os. They've even got cheaper versions, but we're talking the high end stuff. So the O3Os right here, they, yeah, they don't come with a module, but they've got inbuilt receivers. So all that sort of, you're just covered. You can take these out of the box. 400 bucks, you are off the races. You are having fun. And unless you go out to hardcore races all the time with six pilots flying, you you're really not going to notice the difference by not having a rapid fire. If you want to pick these up, I don't like how they didn't fit my face. I don't know if it was just me in terms of the comfort wise and also how they were bugging me with my eyes. I know Bok Grinder had that problem as well. For me, it just, okay, put it this way. Am I going to be flying with these pair of goggles as my daily driver? 
Nah, not, not really. I guess I'm just not that much of a fan. I do prefer the original HDOs over this one. And also a big one to think about for people as well. Should you be picking that up when you might want to, you might be thinking, right, I'm already spending 500 or 650 with a rapid fire. Should I just spend the $640 and get this with a little module adapter on the outside so then I can fly around digital and also analog? And that's kind of, uh, not a bad option, I think. So either for me, you're gonna go high-end, future-proof yourself, or just get OLEDs, but don't worry about the module bay. And if you want to, you could add a $10 module bay on the outside if it's something you wanna do in the future. But as far as the HDO2s, beautiful screen, but uh, for me, for the 500 bucks, a little bit lacking. But what do you guys think? Drop your comments down below. I'm happy that Jono liked them. I found that was uh, that was interesting because traditionally he really likes Sky Zones. So it was good to see him, him really liking this pair of Fat Shark goggles. Comments down below. Also, if you're getting triggered by this video, I want to say if you're enjoying this pair of goggles or that pair or that pair, this was just my video, my opinions. I don't care what goggle you fly as long as you're flying and having fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed that and can appreciate it's made for those pilots coming into the hobby. I want to give them the right information to make the right purchase. That's all this video is aimed at. Other than that, subscribe for more FPV-related content, and as always, happy flying.